Hi, everyone. Perovi is with us on More or Less today, a remarkable singer-songwriter with over 44 million streams to date. Holy cow. Perovi is behind the viral TikTok trend. I hate all men, but... And songs like Broken English and Golden Child. She's a recent grad of UCLA and taking the world by storm with her positive energy, her vulnerability, and she's just so special and lovely. I feel really lucky to share this conversation today and hope you enjoy it, more or less. On More or Less, we are all about feeling good and looking good. So we're excited to tell you about our sponsor, Mind Plus Beauty. Season four is sponsored by the unique and innovative products of Mind Plus Beauty, whose science-based unisex approach to wellness and skincare will help you do just that. These dual action facial oils are designed to help you take care of yourself and get more of what you need sleep, energy, calm, focus, or uplift, while also being great for your skin. For my friends that gua sha or use a jade roller, Mind Plus Beauty's simple to use products are the way to go. They work across most skin types to protect the skin, reduce inflammation, and provide an all natural approach to wellness. So, whether it's a deeper, more restful night's sleep, an energy boost for busy days, a calmer state of mind, increased concentration, or a more positive mood, Mind Plus Beauty's products are designed to help you look and feel your best all day, every day. So if, like us, you like to both look good and feel good, visit mindplusbeauty.com to learn more. That's mind, P-L-U-S, beauty.com. More or less. Welcome to the show, Perovi. Thank you. How Thank are you? Me. How are you feeling, more or less, is the real question. How am I feeling, more or less? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling allergy ridden. I'm feeling jet lagged, feeling sleepy, but I'm feeling good. Well, we're super excited to have you here. Thank you. Um, <laughs> how long are you in New York for? Um, about three more hours and then I'm on a bus to Virginia. Very exciting. <laughs> and you're originally in California, yes? Yes. I just graduated UCLA. So finishing that up. Wrap, yeah. Wrapping that up and then, you know, can, I think I'm going to stay in LA for a little bit, but. What, what are your gener general opinions on New York City? General opinions. It's really pretty when you don't smell it. <laughs> um, that's my only thing is I would just wish that I have one of those like swimmer nose plug yeah. thingies. But um, it's really pretty and I like the energy of it. And I'm a I'm a, somebody who like likes staying busy a lot of the time. So I like the energy of like city that never sleeps moment. Um, but yeah, and I hope to, I actually really want to be by coastal one day and like have a place here and be able to like come over and be like Broadway. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're all about manifestation. So we'll manifest that yeah. into existence. I manifested myself right onto this couch, actually. Absolutely. I said, I really want to be in crutches and on this couch doing a podcast interview. <laughs> I said that like seven months ago and look at me now. <laughs> so for those listening, <laughs> um, our guest here is on crutches for the time being. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can see, but for my audio listeners, um, we got crutches in the room. How much longer on the crutches? We're going to find out next week. I have a little Zoom meeting with my doctor and he's going to give me the news. So how long has it been week-wise? Too long. Too it has long. been like 12 weeks now. And it was because it was misdiagnosed. I, when I first fell, I went to the urgent care. They gave me an x-ray and they were like, oh, this could be something, but we don't think it's an, like anything. And then I went to a sports med doctor because I wanted a second opinion. Right. They're like, this could be something, but we don't think it's anything. So they treated it like a sprain. And I went to Coachella in a boot. And I did my first headline show in a boot. And then I was like, why is this still hurting? And so I got an MRI and they were like, oh, girlie has been fractured the entire time. <gasps> so <laughs> I've been on crutches for three weeks now. And next week is technically the day I'm supposed to get off, but it depends on how much pain she's in. So we'll see. So the sports medicine doctor yes. misdiagnosed it too? I don't think so. I think it was just a hairline fracture that was so like tiny that they thought that it would just heal up on its own maybe. But I feel like I should have just stayed off of it for a while and not gone to Coachella. <laughs> but was yeah. it worth it though? It was. Yeah. I think it was. What was your I turned, favorite set? I turned 22 on <gasps> the last day of Coachella. Oh my God. There are so many exciting things going on in your life right now. Graduation. Oh my God. 22. First festival set yesterday. Ah, Holy cow. Thank you. <gasps> okay, so on the show we ask, what do you need more of and what do you yes. need less of? Could be emotion, feeling, word, energy. Mm, I need more joy. And I need to choose more joy. I feel like that's something that like comes from within. And I'm starting to learn that. It's not just like a result of things happening or like big opportunities or like hanging out with friends, things like that. Like it needs to be something that you choose to look forward to every day. So I definitely need more joy and more like just positivity and all that type of stuff. And then I, what do I need less of? Less, my rent needs to be lower. I need less of that. But I, I also, I, I need less of, whew, 
Let me come up with something insightful to say so that this gets clipped and posted on the internet. Um, We're all about the content. All about content. All about, how do you think I fell and broke my foot? I was making a TikTok. <laughs> I'm being completely dead ass. You can look it's it up on my page. the most Gen Z thing that's Is ever been said on the show. I was actually saving orphans from a burning building. That's my other story. That's what I told my parents. <laughs> and the president landed on my foot while all this was happening. Um, <laughs> I need less of fractured foot and... and um, less injury. Less injury and less... Less, um, less negativity. I really think my more and less is literally the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Just going in opposite directions. But I think a lot of my life over the past two months, like few months, I guess, has been a lot of discovery. Like with graduation, um, UCLA was a very big grounding factor for me in the music industry. Like anytime something went awry with like a project or with a song or anything, I knew I could go to class and forget about it for like an hour or two, just stay focused and study. And I really love the idea of school. I like working hard and having a payoff for that, you know? And the music industry is nothing like that. Mm. You can work as hard as you possibly can and could never see a payoff for years down the line. And I'm trying to get like adjusted to that mindset of being like, this isn't for nothing. And I'm not going to get a gold star and I'm not going to get an A plus every single time that I think I made the next big hit, you know? Um, so it's kind of just like relying on yourself and, and again, choosing that joy and choosing that positivity while you're navigating this new world. So it's kind of what's been going on. I was just listening to, and I can't remember what it was that I was listening to. I think it was a podcast, but they mm -hmm. were talking about the music industry and how Unlike other professions, if you become a doctor or a teacher, you go to school for X amount of time. You study for X amount of time to get to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And then you hit the pinnacle, which is becoming an MD. And like exactly. you can say that for the rest of your life. Yeah. And music and a lot of creative industries, film, theater, there isn't necessarily that pinnacle. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's not meant for everyone, just mm -hmm. like – entrepreneurship may not be for everyone working a nine to five might not be for everyone but music is one of those careers that like you have to choose your own definition of success because it's going to ebb and flow and it has to be fluid Absolutely. so I will ask you what is your definition of success I'm trying to reinvent that right now actually because I was a very big like numbers person again like I really liked school mm -hmm. I, I like competed a lot I did a lot of different like you know things outside of school that required like you know placements and all that type of stuff but I think separating myself and my art from numbers is where I'm going to find success. Like, for instance, Broken English is one of the songs that I just released. And it's a song that I wrote for my parents about, like, learning English and everything like that. And it's one of the most emotionally vulnerable songs I've ever written. And it's not doing major numbers if you're looking at it objectively from, like, streaming and analytics and everything. But I think it's my most successful song to date. And, like... Maybe it's only 20 people who have listened to it, but those 20 people have taken the time out of their day to write me and DM me and like comment about how much it meant to them. And like, this is like talk about paragraphs of pe like people taking the time to make those things. And um, I just think success is not determined about how many millions of people stream a song, how many mini millions of people view a video you've made. I think it's how it makes you feel during the process of it. And I think it's whether or not it's connected to you or somebody else. Because yeah. you could all you could be the only person that it connects to. Like my first single, Golden Child, I connect I connected that song so much because that was literally my life that I wrote about about being a goody two shoes, about being a third culture like child, like growing up in America, and it might not have. I I, I strongly believe that my music has yet to find the audience that it's made for yet. I think that's gonna come a few months, a few years down the line. Like it's finally gonna break into that community that I've been trying to build, but. I think as long as you connect to it and as long as you feel proud of the work and it feels honest, it's successful. Yeah. Long ass answer. So sorry. No, no. Okay. <laughs> I, I like soaking in everything you're saying okay. I, because I think that's not talked about enough mm -hmm. of just simply being proud of the work you do and the output that you make because at the end of the day, you took time to even create that song mm -hmm. and then put it out and market it and do all the things yeah. and it's still yours to keep no matter what number is attached to it. And who it resonates with. I mean, who's to say that 10 years from now, you won't be selling out stadiums and people will be singing that song. So although you feel that way presently, there's always space for growth. Always. Yeah, yeah I agree. So let's talk about yesterday. Yesterday you had your first yesterday. headline. Speaking of growth, first headline. Wait, first festival oh, for, yes, show. First festival show. Yes. But 
yet to be yes. headlined. <gasps> that will happen. Oh my gosh, please. I'm telling you, we're all about good energy, good vibes. Manif- we have this to, is the we manifestation have to speak couch. It. Yeah. Yes, speak it into existence. Um, so how did it go? Okay, it was <laughs> it was so much. First of all, a broken foot. And broken then foot. Pouring rain. Weather. And weather was insane. And then um my set went over. So I had to cut, I had to cut my song, my last song halfway through. You're getting the, you're getting the inside scoop because nobody else in the audience could really tell. What was the last song? It was this new my next thing, my next single, Skeleton, which is I, I've been like posting about it. Constantly. Is that the one you're teasing? Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. I'm obsessed with that one. Ah, I am too. I'm like so excited to release it. And this was gonna be the first time that I sang it all the way through with that in front of an audience that might have heard the teasers, you know? Because right, right. At my first headline show in April, I hadn't teased it yet. So that was like the first time anybody's ever heard it. And I had to stop halfway through and be like, that was just a teaser. Bye y'all. Did they just like come in your ear and be like, literally my <clears> brother <throat> was my guitarist. And so my brother kept on walking over and going, like, we gotta cut it. I was like, we gotta cut it. I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> and then I like finally got the memo when I looked over and like my manager and the stage manager was just like like stop right now <laughs> and oh, I was like oh no. yeah but I think actually I think it was pretty badass imagine saying that your first festival set was cut off in the pouring rain you were on a boot I was sitting on a chair I had one knee on a chair and that's how I was performing and that's then, quite the moment I, I feel like it was and my top was held to d- together by duct tape like, it's so many things went wrong. Like, my top broke right before I went on stage. I was just going to say, you looked great doing it. Because I saw pictures. Like, I opened up Instagram this morning and I saw pictures of the set. And you looked fantastic. Thank you so much. But little did I know you were being held by duct tape. Little did you know. And this is the <laughs> magic of cinema and music and art. <laughs> you can say that again. It, it's magic. That's what it is. Well, that's the title of this podcast. That's freaking incredible. Thank you. That's I feel so very, awesome. very, very happy with what that. What would be that. your dream festival to play? Oh my gosh, Coachella. I knew you were. I, I literally <laughs> asked when I was like, we were just talking about Coachella. Obviously, that. Yes, yes, yes. That'd be so sick. Oh my gosh. I went to my first Coachella last year where I turned 21 again. Okay. On wow, what a 21st birthday. What, it, my birthday always falls on the first weekend of Coachella now. So this is my second year going. But my first year, Harry Styles was singing his. Like, he hadn't released his new album, so he was singing songs from his new album at the Coachella set while I was turning 21. I think it was crazy. We believe people become the best versions of themselves when their minds and body are in the right place at the right time. Do you ever feel like our health needs to be scheduled into our day? Our morning coffee, our supplements, our skincare? We're limited on the products that help us maintain a balanced lifestyle in a healthy, easy, and convenient way. Our friends at Neuro did exactly that by putting nutrients that enhance your health and wellness into something intrinsically convenient, affordable, and portable, gum and mints. Formulated with B vitamins and natural caffeine, energy and focus provides the mental endurance necessary to stay focused on your goals. If you're looking for a steady state of mind, Neuro's common clarity products use vitamin D3 to optimize composure in the moments we need it most. For those that know me, I've been hyping up Neuro for quite some time, and I'm thrilled to partner with them for another season of More or Less. Neuro is always by your side when you need it. Take my word for it and head to getneuro.com now. What's it like to perform with your family? This was my Hard first segue. time. First time performing with your first brother? Time, yeah. Not even at the headline show? Not at the headline show. He came to see it. But you know what's so funny is like my brother was in music far before me. He's like five years older. He went to Berkeley College of Music. Like he's been in music. I, however, had so many different interests. I was trained in graphic design in high school. So I wanted to be a graphic designer. And then I started doing musical theater in high school. And I was just like, okay, wait, maybe this is, this is really fun. And so I went, went to UCLA for musical theater, worked as a graphic designer for UCLA. All the while, I never even touched pop music, even though the dream was always to be a recording artist and be like a pop star. Um, and then quarantine hit. All that type of stuff happened. And my brother at the same time was going through all everything that I was going through. So it was just like really nice to have somebody to lean on. And he's just so incredibly talented and inspirational to me. Like I, I'm so blessed to have a big brother like that. And just somebody who's like laying the the foundation for, for me to like just hang on to his little coattails and and try and do the thing. But it was I actually have a video of my parents crying at Barricade. <gasps> Because my brother and I, he helped me to the edge of the stage because obviously broken foot. Um, he helped me to the edge of the stage and we sat down on the edge and sang like an acoustic song just with him. And um, my parents were like sobbing because this is like their dream to see their kids like perform together and just like, you know, change people's lives. So I just I feel very grateful to be a part of this family and to be able to do what we do. So do you think that's going to be like a recurring thing now? I hope so. I don't know. We'll have to convince him maybe, but. Yeah. Oh, that's so special though. Yeah. That's incredible. I think it is. I I feel like it's a Billy, fin- Billy and Phineas and like. Yes. Like yes. a Carpenter's moment. Yes. Yeah. See. And listen, that worked out. They they turned out pretty fine. I think they're okay. Yeah. Amazing. 
Um, so talk to me about becoming signed and thrusted into the world of a recording artist. I was like chucked in face first. Like I, I mean, face you were on the freaking Elvis movie soundtrack. Who, why did, like, how, <laughs> how? And <laughs> honestly, that was, I thought that was the first time I heard your music. Like, I, like, when I was listening to the soundtrack, because I think it's an incredible film, I was listening to the soundtrack and I was like, wow, like, this girl's talented. And then when I Googled, I was like, coming up with all the TikToks mm-hmm. and I was like, no, I, I know who this is. Like, I've heard her all quarantine. Like, of course. Oh, stop it. So, oh my gosh. I, well, I'm super excited to have you on the show just because I think you're the coolest. Thank and the you. the fact that you were on the Elvis soundtrack is pretty damn cool. Oh, my but God. Thank I just, you so much. I just think you're awesome. So tell me how that all yes. occurred. Dude, I just started posting – like, okay, so UCLA, freshman year, got yes. sent home during quarantine. And I was – Oh, my God, you were a freshman. Yes, I was a freshman. <gasps> and I had just made, like, the best friends I've ever made. I was loving campus life. I lived in the dorms. Like, it was just such a community. And that was something I was lacking in Virginia, really. And I was just – I was devastated to go back home for quarantine. I was like, I finally found my place. And, like, I made it to L.A. Like, I did the thing yeah. that people said that I could never do, you know? And I was, like, chasing the dream. And then all of a sudden, back in childhood bedroom, I was like, this is so sad. But – um, I just started throwing myself into social media, like, to keep in contact with my new friends at UCLA, like, you know, doing all that type of stuff. And then also just, like, it felt like an outlet during such a time where, like, everybody felt so, you know, just, like, like in a tight corner and, like, someplace they didn't want to be. And so I just started posting singing videos and comedy videos and, like, anything that sparked joy, really. I just, like, started posting. And it was at my childhood piano, this little Baldwin upright that we had that's always out of tune. Um, And... My brother and I grew up playing that, and that's where the video started to take off, which is just me sitting at that piano, singing a song, pressing post. Um, And from there, Cloud Nine obviously happened. That was, like, the biggest song. And um, I released all these covers. RCA had actually reached out to me many months before Cloud Nine happened, which is how I knew that I wanted to go with them, which is because they saw me when I had maybe, like, 100 views Mm -hmm. on on a singing video. Like, they believed in me from the get-go. So I ended up signing with them. And then... I slowly brought on more people to my team and I moved back to LA after quarantine was over and then started junior year of of college and was balancing being a secret recording artist because I didn't tell anybody I was a recording artist because I wanted to save that for the first original single drop. And then a year later, dropped the single, announced the signing, did senior year, graduated, and now I'm just kind of like moving towards a new era, I feel. I, I think I'm known for a lot of ballad stuff, a lot of mm-hmm. piano and soulful music, which is something I love. I'm Adele, she is mother. I love her. <laughs> like, she is everything I want to emulate. And I, if you have tickets to her Vegas re- residency, I'm, like, going to rob you on the street. Like, for real? That's insane. <laughs> but um, I, I really want to move into this lane of pop star choreography, back of dancers, yeah. costumes. Like, I want it to be theatrical. And I want, I want like, every aspect of my interests to be like, just join. You know, I made the animations for my Head in the Cloud set that were playing in the background. That's I so taught cool. myself 3D animation two days before the set. So <laughs> and, amazing. Like, thank you. And like, put that stuff up. So I'm like still interested in graphic design and like art. And then for theatrical elements, like I grew up on Bollywood movies and just musical theater in, gel- in general. Like, I just want everything that I'm interested in. I don't want to be confined to one thing, right. you know? I just want it to be what it is meant to be. It's like creating your own universe. Yes, your exactly. Own world. It's like Marvel, but it's me. Exactly. Yeah. I I like that. That's really special. We we had Maud Latour recently on the podcast yeah. and she spoke a lot about that of like creating a really strong community yeah. and then just building upon your interests within that community because I think you were saying before that your music has yet to reach the audience that it was made for. Mm-hmm. But clearly something's working. Like clearly something's really working out. Um, so I want to go back to Joy. We talked yes. a little bit about Joy. Joy. What does Joy mean to you in this present moment? Because it might have meant something different to you yesterday at the festival. Literally. It might have meant something different a year ago. What does that mean today? As you said, you're heading into a new era. Mm. I think I'm trying to find more joy in myself and okay. being alone with myself. Because like being with my parents, my, our family hasn't been together since December. Like it was just so amazing that the first time we're back together is like when my brother and I are performing at my first <sighs> festival. Like it was just magical moment. Like the things that bring me joy are spending time with my friends, spending time with my family, creating music, creating something, you know, just being creative. But I, I really want to find joy in just calmness and stillness, which is something I've never been able to do is just mm-hmm. sit still, sit still and not work and not like 
base my worth off of work um, and just like kind of just be. Because I, I feel like I listen to so many advice podcasts and like read so many like little like, you know, like passages about um, and books about like what you should be doing with your 20s because I thought I was the exception. I really thought I was like 17 years old going like, I know who I am. Like, yeah, I'm the 20s. That's never going to happen to me. What are you talking about? And then I like turned 20. I was like, what is going on? Like, I don't know who I am. I don't know what switched, but it was just like the past I'm 22 now, so it's like been like two years of this like self-discovery process. But everything I've heard has said this is the time to slow down. And this is the time to like embrace that you can work hard for the rest of your life. Yeah. And like, yes, during retirement, you're supposed to enjoy all the fruits of your labor. But at the same time, this is also when life is happening. And you need to not work yourself to death. You need to be able to stop and smell the roses and like look out the window and take pictures of cute dogs, you know? So I'm trying to trying to find the joy in the little things and and being myself. We also live in a country that tells us we need to work to live. Like yes. Work nonstop. Um, and, and money is live. so scary. Oh, my God. Yeah. Money terrifies the brick well, out of me. Well, less rent. Yes. Like, you need less rent. Exactly. I think we all could use less rent. Who here wants less rent? Yeah. <laughs> Raise your hand. <laughs> as, as someone lives in New York and you live in LA, like, yes, but yes. I, could, I could definitely get down with less rent. Mm -hmm. um, but it's true. Like, our generation is definitely struggling financially. And, yeah. And, I mean, Inflation aside, like it's just really tough to even think about retirement. Yeah. And I come from the mindset that I'm sure you share as well, mm. based on what we're saying is like, we shouldn't have to wait till retirement to enjoy our lives. Yes. Um, we shouldn't wait till like a certain age or a certain time period to then enjoy life because that's not promised or guaranteed. That's that's getting very deep for a second, but mm -hmm. let's get there. It, it's true. Like you, nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is promised tomorrow yeah. that I wish our society was a little bit more about taking pleasure and stock in the moment yes. versus waiting till I can collect social security. <laughs> Period. I think something that calms me down when I like start to freak out a little bit about like, existentially. Ex yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like, I have so many lives that I haven't lived yet. I am not a mom yet. I'm not like a grandma. I'm not like, I don't own a house. Like there's so many different things that happen that are like kind of trademarks of life. And like, it could end up being part of my life. It could not, but I'm still really young. When I zoom out and put it into perspective, like knock on wood, I have so much life ahead of me, mm -hmm. you know? So it's it's okay to not have it all figured out right now. And that's something that I hate when people say, because I'm just like, but I, I know, it to, I but, know. But if I want it to be figured out right now, but. It's I'm like taking your own advice. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I, I can I can dish it out, but I cannot. Right, I cannot. right. I'm that friend too. I'm the therapist friend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and like I tend to give pretty decent advice yeah. but when it comes to me I am so stubborn I don't take it that's exactly um, me I actually had someone yesterday ask me if I had kids mm -hmm. and I fully was stopped in my tracks because <laughs> I, I, I'm 25 and uh -huh. I, I was like oh my god but also I I understand that like there are certain 25 year olds that do have kids and yeah. like there's parts of the country where like there's a lot of young moms and young parents and like but the idea of being at the thought that someone asked me that was, I was shook for like the rest of the day. Yeah, you still feel like you're 12 years now I'm old in your about mind. It. Yeah, I'm, you're yeah. Just like, Why would you ask me that? I'm literally 12. Wait, what do you mean? I'm 25? Like well, I'm 22? Case in point, and being you were a freshman, like mm -hmm. in college when quarantine happened, like, do you look at that period of your life now as like a blur? Yes. I documented a lot of it so I can like revisit the memories and everything like that. And I know what the feeling was, but. So much of life has felt like a blur recently. And I've started to get into journaling more because of that. Because I've started to look back on my journaling from quarantine. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's something so special to see how far you've come and see your mindset then compared to now. Um, but yeah, it, it, it just, I think it went by too fast for my taste, but everything happens for a reason. I, yeah, I feel so. like I have, I feel like I have COVID fog. Like I feel like that period mm -hmm. of time, just, I don't know if that's a real thing. I feel like my brain is foggy from that time period. Yeah. So mentally I still feel like who I was before COVID, but not really. Wow. Like okay. I, I just like can't compute. Like mm. <laughs> the math isn't mathing when I think about time. Mm. So when I'm at, like, when someone asked me that, I was like, wait, what? Like I'm still 20. Like <laughs> What like there's no way about? I'm now in my mid twenties. Like mm -hmm. that's a weird thing too. That's um, granted, weird. you have time for that. But <laughs> when you start to say like your mid twenties, like these are weird sayings that like 
you don't think about until someone else brings it upon you. Yeah. And then you start to go down the rabbit hole. Yes. But I, I love to journal too. I'm curious. Do you do prompts or do you sit down like in the morning and do it? Like what is your routine with that? I literally just do it. Honestly, I want to get more routine about it and like do it like in the morning. But usually it's when I wake up with anxiety and then I just need to like write it all out or else I will just like vomit everywhere. Um, and you know what's really cute? My boyfriend for our 11 month anniversary, which was I like my angel numbers are 11, 11. So like oh. it was a big deal to me. I was like, let's get each other something lucky. So his middle initials are K and J. So I got him two little pins to put. He's also a musician and performer. Okay. So I got him two little pins that say K and J as good luck charms for his performance jacket. And then he got me an engraved journal that said Perovi's Evolution Journal. So I've been, and it's like pink and everything, like it's perfect. So I've been writing in that like every day, especially for like work-related events, like the festival I wrote in that and like the headline show in April, like I wrote in that. So I think, yeah, it, it's just, it's partially to keep memories and to ground myself and just zoom out a little bit, but it's also just like to get all the word vomit out there, you know? Yeah, does that, do you think that just helps you be more present? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think I think there's a a big difference in your day if you start it being grateful. And if you start like listing the things that you are so thankful for because it's very easy to focus on the negative and see the glass is half empty. And even as somebody who like I consider myself very positive and then quarantine hit and I was like everything is doomed. Like nothing goes right anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to like get myself back to that level of just like happiness in life and just gratefulness and like gratitude and like for everything because there's always going to be a silver lining if you like look for it yeah yeah I feel like and for anyone listening it it may sound a little corny the whole gratitude thing <laughs> but it does work like I just bought a new journal that is more prompt driven because I was mm. struggling to like I can always brain dump but sometimes it gets more overwhelming for me to just write everything down so this that. one has it's a morning one and an evening one. Mm. And in the morning, it has you list the intention for the day, the quote of the day, um, and something I was looking forward to. And then at night, it says, like, what is something I need to improve? What did I learn from the day? And I then like list that. five things I'm grateful for before I go to bed. By doing that before I go to bed is really helpful because I'm taking inventory of what the day was. And it could have been a really crappy day, mm. but I'm still forced to find the good in the day. Mm -hmm or in my life, and then I can go to sleep with a clean slate. So if you're listening, give it a shot. Take a notepad like out, that. five things that you're grateful for before you go to bed or when you first wake up, and you wrote it down, you put it out there, and now it's yours to embrace. I love that. I've never journaled that night, but I will actually try that. I got to say, mm. consistency is a practice I'm trying to get better yes. at because I'll do it in the morning and then I forget. Mm. Like, Or I'm like watching Netflix and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to get up and go journal. Like Housewives is on. Like, I, like it's just, mm. you know – so I'm trying to get better at doing it more consistently, yeah. but I think it is a really good practice if you're disciplined at it. Yeah. Um, and also just there as you need it as a coping mechanism, really. Like it's there for you and it's your yeah. words. Yeah. I feel very old school with a lot of my interests, like reading and writing. And I'm like, who does that anymore? Am I a pilgrim? But I think it's it's something very grounding to go back to something that's not technology I think is is a big thing for me. And like as somebody whose literal job is social media and like, you know, spreading my music and stuff like that. And like everything is technology driven nowadays. But it's, I think it's really important to take a step back and just like get some good old pen and paper, get some good old like, you know, wood. <laughs> some, <laughs> and, wood. <laughs> some wood. And, you know. Do the thing. I used to journal on my computer, actually. Like, I... <laughs> really? Wait, that's so Bridget Mendler of you. Have you seen that movie? She, like, used to write I feel her... like I know what movie you're talking about. I, I like a Word document diary and then it got that's leaked everywhere? It, mine didn't get leaked. My oh. computer just crashed. Oh. <laughs> I don't know which is where. <laughs> and it was gone forever. Like, eight years of memory. It's just gone forever. Oh. But my teen years, I, I did it on Word. Oh. And then I had a Word doc and then my computer crashed. Oh. Um, but you know what? Did what do I need more? What do I need less? <laughs> I come back to that. But uh, no, none of it saved. It was gone forever. Oh. And then I decided that if I was going to journal again, this was before the cloud was invented. There was no, yes. you know, there's no storage. <laughs> um, it was just gone. So I actually made a private Tumblr page way back when, and it was locked. And I started journaling there. And it still exists. That's I'm totally going to go find that. <laughs> I'm like, sure somebody listening is about to go and be like, find my Tumblr. Tumblr. You'll never find it. It's password protected. <gasps> what's what's your the name of your first childhood pet? 
if you don't mind me asking. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who knows me will know the, name, the answer to that. But yeah, so it's funny you said that it like gets away from like journaling is a way to get away from digital and technology. But I feel like I found I was just a fast typer. Yeah. <laughs> just get it I get all that. Out. I get that. <laughs> Angry yeah. typing on the computer, yeah. like my emotions. Um, but now I'm more like a pen and paper gal mm. myself. Teach his own. Totally. Mm. Totally. How are you balancing school and music and life? Like what – now that school is over. Yes. How do you find yourself balancing all the worlds that you are now in? There's no balance and I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, can, we can unpack that. We can, like, you're, let's get a little deep. I'm bringing the shovel. We're getting – we're going to – we're going to dig a little deeper. It's just, again, I don't know what to do with free time. Yeah. I'm really bad at sitting still. At least like – Sometimes I'm just like, maybe let me romanticize a nine to five because at least like you would have a solid amount of work and feel accomplished at the end of the day and then be able to like just have free time and not worry about work. I, I don't know if that's how a nine to five works. So, that's my wait, understanding. So let's talk about this. Can you yes. implement like work hours? That's what I'm trying to think of. But here's the thing. I'm not in the studio regularly. There's not like, a oh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm mm -hmm. at the studio. You know what I mean? It's like, when it when people are available, when it happens, it's at any start time. There's no consistency, which is why I'm excited about starting this new chapter of my life because I graduated in December, but I'm still living at UCLA. So I will be moving in like summer. Um, and then in summer, once I get away from like the college aesthetic and like I, as much as I love it and I know I'm going to miss it so much, I'm, I'm really ready to start implementing a routine that's not based around like, oh, a class time. Oh, like People have to go to class now, so, like, avoid this area or, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just, like, so many things to balance. I'm excited to, like, get up. Here's here's what I'm going to manifest on this couch yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, well, Tell me the dream routine. This is the dream routine. We're going to do sunrise, get up, out of bed, drink water, go to yoga class immediately. I, like, if I do something where other people are expecting me to be there or I've put in money, I will be there. Yep. If I don't have money invested, if I don't have people relying on me, I will not do it. So I'm going to go to yoga class. I'll come back, make my cute little breakfast bowl. My breakfast bowls, if you follow me on Instagram, it's incredible. I will gas myself up on that. I will doubt myself on music. You will not find me doubting myself <laughs> on my breakfast bowl. Make my breakfast bowl. And then some sort of work. I don't know, like, if it's making a video every single day or, like, just, like, I want to have, like, that, like, consistency of knowing that I've done something that's moving my life forward or moving my career forward or making me feel happy, you know? And hopefully I'm going to be able to set up, like, an in-home studio and, like, recording space mm -hmm. so that I can start writing more on my own and, like, be more efficient about it. But, yeah, it's just right now at this moment in time I know that the future is going to get better with like more routine implemented and like all that stuff I'm just kind of like don't really know what's going on it's too much free time then with my foot I can't really like go outside it's been like a really weird era of my life yeah um of like no coping mechanisms like going on a walk and getting fresh air because I can't walk <laughs> but yeah it's okay. kind of weird. But I think it's going to get better. Yeah. And maybe Optimistic. you could do like, you could have like a content day and like a planning day. Exactly. Like implement your own version of a of a nine to five. I think that's what the vibe is going to be. Once I'm like, once I'm ready to like start that, because once I start it, I want to commit to it, you know? So I'm, I feel like these next few weeks are going to be like prepping for this new stage of life. And then I'm just going to go boom. And so you said you were a musical theater major. So yes. are your friends also moving on to like theater and creative careers or are they going into the workforce like nine to five? It's a lot of different stuff. Um, a majority of my friends are going into like performance. Uh, some of them are going coming to New York Yay. and then some of them are staying in LA. Some of them have got nine to fives yeah. now. Like it's like a whole mixed bag. But so they're also in that journey too yes. then of having free time yeah. and still trying to put the work in. Yeah. And most of the people that I know have got like part-time jobs and stuff like that. So I feel like that might be something that'd be fun and grounding. And I love me a color me mind. So I feel like that would be my <laughs> dream part-time job. That could be really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I also mm. like the Pino's palette, like the painting classes. Yes. It's like yeah. a little bonding time. When people go to like Color Me Mine and those places, it's just for bonding. It's so much fun. It's good energy. Good energy. That's what we need more of. More of, more <laughs> good energy. That's what we need more of. That's what we call a callback. <laughs> Let's back wrap it up to the with beginning. <laughs> the final question I'm going to ask you is, what is one thing you've done to take care of yourself this week or one thing you're planning to do to take care of yourself? Oh my gosh. One thing I'm planning to do. A little bit of a self-check-in. Self-check-in. I'm about to go relax in Virginia. I'm going home to Virginia literally in two, two hours <laughs> after this podcast. And it's going to probably be one of my last times in my childhood home because my parents are moving to California. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like fully on like for sale sign. 
like put outside. Like, how do you feel about that? Oh my gosh, I feel like I never got to properly say goodbye to like how it was set up and like the regularness of it because after the like Christmas time and like holiday time, I didn't know that we were going to sell the house right away. So they packed everything up and I never got to like fully just be like, oh, this is the last time I'm seeing everything as it was. Mm -hmm. So I'm about to go into like a show house basically. Like it's all set up for people to come see, but I'm just excited to be in like nature and and like in some place familiar before again entering this new stage of my life with moving and like being in a different part of There's LA. There's a lot of moves going on. Lots of new stuff, but I think change is very exciting and it's I'm a very nostalgic person, so I know that I'm going to miss UCLA more than anything, and I'm going to miss the way it was, and, like, the... I'm going to think about it and go, like, oh, my gosh, I had no responsibilities. Like, there were no bills to pay at the dorm. Like, come on. I'm in that phase but, right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's still exciting, and I'm, I'm just... I'm really optimistic and, and hopeful for the future. Well, we said earlier, like, you have so many incredible things going on. I'm so excited for you, and thanks for coming by, more Thank or less. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Thank you for listening to More or Less with Jess. To learn more about our podcast, head to moreorlesswithjess.com or follow us on Instagram at moreorlesswithjess. Here at More or Less, we talk a lot about affirmations and the power of positivity. So we're excited to talk to you about our sponsor, Notes to Self Socks. At Notes to Self, they know that words can make all the difference. So they put affirmations where your brain can see them each and every day, right on your toes. Notes to Self's comfy, marathon-tested socks are made right here in the USA in a variety of colors and sizes for you and all your friends. So if you want to walk a mile in our uplifting footsteps, go to notes2self.com today to order your very own daily dose of positivity. More or less with Jess.